Anyone will give up electricity. Best selection. What you need, buddy? Just what I need. you don't understand me no one understands me and what i'm doing is the essence of survival the essence of survival what are you talking about want to find out just close your eyes what do you perceive well um i hear noises yes what else Oh, something stinks. Exactly. The smell. Impulses going straight from the senses to the limbic system, triggering an emotional response. Memories. The well-being of the mind. But, uh, well, that smells like... Well, that smells like shit. What did you expect? What do you think people use as fertilizers around here? Too much information. Sorry. So, who are you and what are you doing here? Before the fall, I used to work in a fragrance manufacturing company. I consider myself lucky to have been professionally active within the only century when the world actually smelled nice. Now it's back to normal. So I asked myself, how can I change that? What scent would make people the most happy in this miserable world? I sure hope you don't mean smelling like shit is the essence of survival. Of course not. I have this really exciting idea for a new fragrance. People are going to pay a fortune for just a whiff. I called it Turn Me On. And it's almost finished. I just need some scraps for the heart note. A uh, heart note? Hmm. The middle note of the perfume. Metal scraps and lavender. That's all I'm missing. Oh, of course. Metal scraps and lavender. The obvious blend. Naira goes out of her way to be... Uh, ...controversial. If you bring me some, I'll tell you everything about my secret formula. Naira said she needs lavender for her perfume, too. Hm. Now that makes more sense. Here, your, uh... ...ingredients. Mmm, good. 
I wish there was more oil on the metal scraps, but... Oh, Naira, can't you just be thankful for what you've got for once? She gives me this shit every day, I swear. Okay. Okay. Voila! It's ready. Here, smell it. <sighs> wow. It smells... It's... Oh, boy, it's like heaven. What is it? Silly little boy. Too young to know, aren't you? It's new car smell. A... A car? Are you disappointed? The scent of luxury is the bass note, the smell of confidence is the heart note, and the fragrance of risk and adventure is the head note. All you dream about is to turn it on and drive away into the distance. Thanks so much for helping me out. Unlike some people. Here, have this. I rubbed it with Turn Me On. This'll remind you to tune into your sense of smell now and then. Metal scraps. Naira wants them. Oh, I hope this isn't some wild goose chase. Making perfume out of metal. <laughs> Sounds absurd. Okay, one more try. I'm finally going to carve a working flute. And when I do, I will carve my magic flute. The magic flute. Sounds perfect. I'm a freaking genius. Reward, man. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that boy came 
kids nothing but trouble. I think it would be better for Sophie if she didn't come back. Hey there. Rehearsing for the big night? Where did you come from, handsome? I heard you, uh, singing. Don't lie to Lola, sweet cheeks. Bet you thought someone was strangling a cat. Uh, not at all, I, I... See this neck? You shouldn't be able to. Usually, it's wrapped in the softest, most rare of mink stoles. Lola was the grand dame of the bazaar. But until reunited with her beloved mink stole, she is unfit to perform. But how will Lola dazzle anyone without her beloved mink stole? Without it, I can't hit the high notes. And you don't see mink scampering about everywhere, do you? Now where is it? Earlier, a strong gust of wind ripped it from Lola's tender throat and carried it away. I saw it flapping from the scaffolding near the GRE quarantine at the intersection of Market and Horseshoe. Lola is powerless to retrieve it. Well, uh, I could. Would you? Lola could return to the bazaar to entertain, not frighten children like a lurking screamer. Well, we can't have that. No, indeed. Thank you, my knight in shining... Whatever it is that you're wearing, I shall await you at the bazaar. Hurry, my fans await. Mess with us. No fucking way. way. Well, this is a... <laughs> now
Ader. I'm listening. That's Aiden. I've just been offered an extremely shady deal, but maybe it'll turn up a lead on Lucas. I need more than just leads, Aiden. Whatever it is, check it out. Will do. Over and out. All right, who farted? Law and order. Ain't no other way to For say it. For a while, I ran with Anders. Who's that? The greatest con artist alive. One day, he says, this city's full of suckers hoping for a miracle. We can take advantage of that. Anders had a plan. What plan? Lots of folk went missing after the war. I mean, look around. You can see memorials in every other street corner. Families needed to know what happened. And where there's a need, there's a business opportunity. That's sick. Have you no decency? No, oh, decency's dead, mate. It's eat or be eaten. Widows were the easiest marks. We'd pick a house with a yellow ribbon. I'd be on crutches. Anders oozing charm, saying we'd fought with their dead husbands during the war. PK, the army, the side didn't matter. For a hot meal, we'd promised to tell them what happened to their husbands. It worked every time. They'd give us food, water, medicine, crystals, anything they had. They wanted closure. We gave it to them. The details changed, but we stuck to the same basic story. It always ended with an epic fight and some heroic act by the husband. In no time, we were richer than kings. At least, we thought we were rich. But then we hit the biggest score of all. Melinda was like every other widow we'd met. Pretty 30-something brunette, blue eyes living near Meatpacking Square. We did our usual thing. But before we leave, she says, my husband, he was the PK treasurer. The night he died, he told me they had a war chest, medicine, crystals mostly. He'd want you to have it. You got no shame. Let him finish. I bet they were skimming for themselves. We give each other the look. It's in Houndfield, she says, but it's not safe during the day. The next night, we take Melinda to our safe house to gear up. She leads us to this dark zone near the chemical zone. It's in the basement, she whispers, shivering with fright. We tell her to stay behind, because, you know, if there's a fight, she'd just get in her way. You left her on her own? Yeah. Then we went looking for a way in, and eventually, we found it. And? There was no loot. Instead, there was a demolisher in that basement. We barely got out of line. When we got back, Melinda was gone. So was our stash. Medicine, crystals, food. She took everything. On the table, a note. Sorry, guys. Nothing personal. Just business. <laughs> the biter was bitten. Only in this case, it was a demolisher. Turns out she'd been tracking us for weeks. And we never saw it coming. Anders and I split up after that. I bet he's still out there hustling. I enlisted with the PKs. But hearing war stories at night, people who actually died fighting for what they believed in, it made me feel guilty every time. I lasted two months. Now I'm back where I started before the fall. A nobody telling stories. Citizen, I feel proud to be wearing this uniform. There's this ring in my ear. Inhibitor container detected.
How should I know that? I'm, really I'm supposed to sell you, my dear ghost. You got you. Then why did you drink your stuff? Things are better for us now, right? Depends, doesn't it? Veronica, the guy was a prick. The PK were a pain in the ass with him in charge. Conclusion's pretty straightforward. Lucas is gone. Things are better for us. Amen. It'd be better if you just shut up, Barney. Where's Sophie? You again. What are you doing? Spying on me? Well, you got something to hide? You were talking about the PK commander, weren't you? Look at Mr. Nosy here. Watch where you stick that nose, Pilgrim, or you'll lose it. That fuckward Lucas deserved to die. That's the truth. Barney, the truth is this. You're an idiot, and the peacekeepers protect us. Protect? For what? Who took over our windmill? The peacekeepers. Who took over the metro? Fucking Lucas. So they should get the fuck out before they all end up like their motherfucking commander. You were supposed to wait for me. Suppose schmozed. Plans changed. Afraid I was after your crystals, huh? Afraid? Of you? Give me a break. We've got our own interests to look after, Pilgrim, and they're none of your business. Two of your men died for your interests. You used Birdie to distract me, that it? You don't know shit about me, my people, jackass. Birdie was like a brother to me. For some reason, my sister wants to see you, so go bother her. We must negotiate. You don't negotiate with extortionists. You're nothing like your mother. Besides, I'm in charge here. Prepare your men. And we're giving Joe those goddamn crystals. Fucking coward. I know what you think. But we have to listen to him, Herman. It's for the bazaar. Only for the bazaar. Sophie. Relax, Herman. He saved Barney, remember? 
Oh. Interesting guy, your little brother. You two didn't get along, I take it. Let's just say it wasn't love at first sight. Barney has his downsides. But on the upside, he is unshakably loyal. And with so many problems plaguing old Villador, I just need people I can trust. What are your problems? You're the curious sort, aren't you, Aiden? Just ask. What do you want to know? Why did Barney bail on me? Crystals are valuable. We needed them for a transaction. And now, you'll be able to help. Like I did with Barney and Birdie? It didn't feel like much of a help. Barney was in shock when he heard about Birdie. That's why he bailed on you. He... He wants what's best for the bazaar, Aiden. He thinks he'll protect us all. He's really just a kid. He was just a teenager when our mother died. But even earlier, when he was little, we were always on our own. Now he's an adult and he doesn't need anyone. But he hurts himself the more he tries to help others. It seems after the commander was murdered, things got complicated between you and the peacekeepers. Oh, that's an understatement. To be more precise, our situation got fucked up. But Lucas, he deserved to die. Since the plague, nothing has hurt the locals like him. It was on his order that the peacekeepers seized our windmill to support themselves. They take a large part of our crops and water. In return for what? Protection? I can protect my people myself. I started learning that when I was a kid. That spat with Carl. What was that about? Let's just say the PK commander's death only made our problems worse. Look around, Aiden. What do you see? Something people outside the walls could only dream of. All these people will be dead by the end of the month. Why? Because in short order, our water supplies will run dry. Two weeks ago, a local thug named Joe and his pal Jack took over the only water tower in the area with their gang. Not long ago, they lived in the bazaar. But Carl threw them out for pulling scams. And now they're taking their revenge. They mined the tower and they're threatening to blow it up if they don't get a weekly tribute in the form of medicines, food, and crystals. And all these people, don't they know anything? Not how low the water reserves have gotten. I was gonna handle it, but Carl was afraid of causing a panic. Instead, he went to the PK for help. Of course he came back empty-handed. They're only here to help themselves, certainly not us. They could care less that Joe took the tower and demanded protection money. My mother used to say, never bargain with extortionists, when she was still in charge here. Wait, so before Carl took power, you... She led the bazaar with an iron fist, and Carl listened to her. After her death, he became full of himself, and he got cocky. Well, didn't your mother want you to succeed her? I know what she wanted for her people. Community and freedom. That's what she always said. But don't ask me what she wanted for me. I don't know if I even existed for her at all. She was a great leader, but a shitty mom. What are you gonna do? What I have to do. I promise to help Carl. So while he's in charge, we're gonna pay off Jack and Joe. And they're gonna keep squeezing more and more out of us. And so on and so on. The most important thing is for my people to be safe. You've proven that you can be trusted. I want to ask you for help. Carl believes Joe will live up to his side of the bargain and that he'll give us access to water. But I'm skeptical. I have to send people to negotiate with bandits and I don't want any surprises. Carl and our people have already set out for the spot where the deal will go down. Make sure everything goes smoothly. So I should guard them? Yes. From a discreet distance.
Carnage Hall tournament is getting closer and closer. He's a murderer! Aiden, tell them! Tell them Marco poisoned the water! Stop blaming others for your crimes! Aiden knows the truth! What are you waiting for, Ed? Hold on. This is serious business. So let's hear what Aiden has to say. Bevan's husband, Luke, he's dead. Julian says you know the truth. So tell us what you know. What's in it for me to say anything? A clear conscience? I thought I could expect more from a pilgrim. Aiden, please, don't make this a negotiation. A man has died. I visited Julian's supplier. There's nothing wrong with his water. I told you, string him up! But, but I didn't poison the water! Guys! Aiden! Get him out of my sight, Ed. Stop, please, don't do this to me. Let's go, Julian. You can plead your case to the council. I am in the bazaar today. The wind is blowing from the east. That's a bad omen. Aiden, you know anything about this night runner thing? Sophie has interested in evil. Like a pilgrim, apparently. Take your peek, son. Bold choice, son. Super. Great quality. Ah, had your eye on that, did you? I stand ready to us, uh, us, uh, help you again. Fighting, fighting, oh. Oh. Still not. Carnage Hall. 